What are the real risks of buying a franchise? <laughs> you wanna go down the rabbit hole? Let's go. Obviously, there are risks associated with investing in a franchise. The sarcastic tone of my voice has more to do with the risks that people perceive that aren't actually usually true, and then there's the real risks. In this video, let's talk about those real risks as well as some of those perceived risks. Number one, the biggest risk in investing in a franchise is of course the risk of failing. Most failure that happens in a franchise is franchisee created, and therefore it could be franchisee avoided if some things are done properly in the setup, like selecting the right franchise, using an experienced franchise consultant to help you select the right business, making sure that you do proper due diligence to find out from other franchise owners how much money it's gonna to take to build a positively cash flowing business. Because look, the number one reason that in general that businesses fail is because people run out of money. But in a franchise, that shouldn't happen. If there's a path, if there's a track record that's gone before you of other franchisees that you can validate with, and you can be prepared for best case and worst case, you shouldn't run out of money. But at the end of the day, it's you that's executing on the plan. It's you that's spending the money to build this business, and you are the greatest variable which nobody can control but you. So failure when it's franchisee created, in my mind, it's more of a perceived risk than it is a real risk because if you're partnered with a strong franchisor team who has a solid track record and there are a lot of other franchisees out there doing it properly, why are you going to be in the small percentage of people that fail compared to the large percentage of people that are successful? I once saw a franchisor claiming in their FDD that they had a 98% success rate over a 30 year history. Now, even for positive Kim Daly, I was like, what? Is that even possible? Like 98% of your people are successful? So I had to ask the franchisor, like seriously? Only 2% of your franchisees fail? But what I learned by asking the question to the franchisor is that they do not allow their franchisees to fail beyond that two or 3% mark. They're either going to ask you to sell your business so they can bring in somebody else to try to run it and make it successful, or they're going to gobble up your store as a corporate location. But either way, they're not gonna claim you as a failure. <laughs> So is it a little misleading? I mean, maybe if you take the data at face value, but if you do what I did and you ask the questions to understand in the system how it's going down, it's not really misleading at all. In fact, it's to me, it's as strong of a really good franchisor because they're not gonna let you lose your shirt, right? They're gonna help you gracefully exit with a little bit of money. You might take some loss, but leave without losing everything that you put into it. So the risk of failure in a franchise, in the world that I live in, yes, it happens, but it rarely happens. And if your ship is going down, you've gotta be brave enough to raise your hand and either ask for help before it's too late, before you're nearly broke, or just put a for sale sign on your business and try to create an exit strategy for you. Because even if what you've created isn't valuable to you, what you've created may have value to somebody else. Please don't let yourself fail completely. Reach back out to the franchisor. Tell them that you're struggling. Go back to your consultant who may be able to help you find a buyer for your location. List it on Biz Buy Sell. Find a franchise broker who has a license to sell a franchise. <laughs> there are resources available to help you. So by the time that you say yes to your dream to own a franchise business, the risk of failure is more perceived than it is real. Number two, the risk of running out of money. Look, the number one reason that businesses fail 
is because people run out of money before they figure out how to make money. But that statement is not owned in franchising. That is in the entrepreneurial world where entrepreneurs are making it up as they go along. It often takes more money than they think it's going to take. It takes longer to build that brand, to build a positively cash flowing business than entrepreneurs typically think. And that's why 90% of small businesses fail. But that statistic is not owned in franchising. Every business that you explore will disclose their success or their failure rate with you in their franchise disclosure document. So you'll be able to see to this point in history how successful their franchisees have been. You'll be able to see that 94% of the time people are successful or 90% of the time, whatever that claim is in that franchise disclosure document. But running out of money, like in a franchise, this should never happen. There are enough resources between the FDD, what the franchisor legally has to say to you in writing about the investment. Then there's the leadership by the franchisor, the franchisor that's going to take you through an investigation of their business, helping you learn about the tools, not just you know, how much money it's going to cost to get the business open, but the toolbox that they're creating to help you make money. Right. And then also sharing with you the real world numbers of how landlords may be granting tenant improvement money nowadays, or how landlords may be generous with free rent that will lower some of those startup costs. So the numbers in the FDD are one way to look at the investment, to know that you're properly capitalized. The franchisor is going to be another way, and I might argue that that's a better way to really have real world numbers about what it will cost. But ultimately, the number one thing that I want you to do before you invest in a franchise is to go out and to talk to at least four to eight franchise owners to see in the real world what owners are able to create using the toolbox that the franchisor has created. From their experience, when did the business cash flow? How much money are they making? How much money do they think they can make? So before you give any money to a franchisor, you are empowered to do all of this due diligence. And that due diligence should make all the difference in the world. So this risk of running out of money, it's really no risk at all if you've done proper due diligence. Number three, the risk of not finding good employees. Most people that I work with are not looking to buy themselves a job, right? They want to be the CEO who works on the business rather than in the business. So they're going to have to rely on employees to be there when they don't want to be there. But then a lot of my candidates will start interviewing franchise owners and start looking for trouble when it comes to hiring employees, especially right now in the moment that we are in in 2021. I hear a lot of negative validation about the difficulties in finding good employees. What the daily coach wants to challenge you with is instead of trying to find the right employee, I want you, Mr. Business Owner, to create good employees. Look, when you had your first job, were you a good employee? (laughs) Or were there key mentors along your path? that taught you how to be a good employee. Part of becoming a business owner is embracing the role of ownership and embracing the role of being the leader of your own organization. Look, I hear from so many W-2 employees who are finally breaking free from corporate America. They're excited about the opportunity to go hire people that they wanna work with, to build a culture that they never had in their corporate job. And yet they set out to interview franchise owners looking for trouble with regard to finding employees. It's like, really? So yeah, perfect employees probably don't exist. They do exist if they're created through your leadership, through your mentorship. So I would take negative validation about how hard it is to find good employees with a total grain of salt. Find people that have personalities that you enjoy. Find people that you believe are coachable, that are hungry, and turn them into your good employees. 
Number four, the risk of not finding a good location. So this is one of those perceived risks more than it is a real risk. If you have invested in a strong franchise or partner, there is no way they are going to let you down by not helping you to find a great location. Now, I'm not gonna say that it's always gonna happen on your best time frame. <laughs> Real estate cannot be rushed. You have to be patient. Part of being patient though, I think it's the franchisor's job during your due diligence to set up a proper expectation of how long it could take. But then what you can do in addition to that is to validate with other franchise owners who are open already to find out in their market how long did it take them to find that good location. Oftentimes it does take a lot longer than anybody ever expects or wants it to, but then sometimes it doesn't. You don't have to go in expecting the worst. You could go in expecting the best. But I also want you to be prepared that it does take time and you cannot rush real estate. Now, if you are investing in a franchise where the franchisor leaves finding the right real estate to you, negotiating the lease, that is not a franchise that I particularly would invest in. I think that it leaves too much to chance. If this is your first time owning a business and you've never negotiated a commercial lease, it's going to be really hard for you to have the confidence that you need to win that lease from a potentially aggressive landlord, not to mention to try to win over that landlord so that he grants you a couple of months of free rent or what's known as TI or tenant improvement money to help alleviate some of your build out costs. So if your business relies on the real estate to really drive the perfect customer, Real estate cannot be rushed and it's critically important. Please do proper due diligence because this risk can be avoided by simply partnering yourself with a good solid franchise or partner who's going to be there to help you in that process. And then by doing proper due diligence, by validating with the existing franchise owners to help set your own expectation about the appropriate time frame that you should have planned in your mind for finding that perfect real estate. Number five, the risk of not finding enough customers. Well, <laughs> this is what owning a business is truly all about, isn't it? If every business owner had all the customers that they wanted, no business would ever fail. So this is really the only true risk in owning a business. But here's the thing, people. The risk of not finding enough customers is completely controllable and it is owned by you. I know I'm not popular when I say that. <laughs> I know that you want it to be the franchisor's responsibility to find your customers for you. I know you wanna blame the competition. I know you wanna blame your small town. I know you wanna blame your real estate. But I'm telling you, in all the years that I have been involved in franchising, and it's a lot of years, I have never honestly heard a failing franchisee blame it entirely on any of those things. Finding enough customers to build a positively cash flowing business and the business of your dreams is exactly what owning a business is all about. And the day that you wake up and you realize this is the gas pedal in your business is the day that you will have a business that you own and control. I know this factually because it is exactly what happened to me. I was an average performing consultant for eight years here at Franchoice. I always mention one thing. What was the one thing? The one thing was sort of a hypothesis the first year because I didn't really know. Remember, I was a nutritional biochemist, not a business major. <laughs> and nobody at the time was talking about these types of things in my industry. But I had a hypothesis. What would happen if, and the if was, what would happen if I focused on stacking my pipeline full of good people like you who wanted to explore a franchise business? I put my head down. I stayed true to what I committed myself to doing. I followed through for one solid year. 
And one year later, I was a history maker. I had built the largest franchise consulting business in the history of franchise consulting, a business so big that other people thought what I had done was magical and they didn't believe that I could do it again. But I knew what I had done and it was replicatable and it has been replicatable because that was back in 2012. And today at the making of this video, it is 2021. I have replicated those results year over year over year, improved them and grown them. I've shared what I did with other consultants who now beat me, who, who, build, who have bigger pipelines than I have. And I'm here to share it with you. This is the key to owning a business. Back in 2011, when I got focused about what would happen if, and I built a very, very large pipeline, what I really did was take full ownership of my business. I maximized what I could control, forgetting the rest, and the rest was history. And I say it emphatically because I want to inspire you. Most of the candidates that I work with say to me, oh, I don't want to sell anything. I don't really want to prospect. I don't really want to network. And I think, well then, you can't ever own the business of your dreams. If you are the owner who works on the business, not in the business, this is exactly the role that you need to learn to master. If you're the owner who works in the business as well as on the business, this is exactly the role that you need to master. So I'm sorry to say something that's not going to be popular, but it is truth. And here at The Daily Coach, we want to share the good news and we want to share the truth. If you want to be a history maker in your business, or if you simply just want to live the life of your dreams with a business that you own and feel in control of, the risk of not having enough customers is entirely controlled by you. And here's a little half risk for you. The risk that you might have to work harder than you really want to. But I just made a video on that very topic laying by my pool. So go check out that video. And really, is working hard for yourself ever really hard? No one ever said it was gonna be easy. If it were, everybody would do it. The rewards of owning a business far outweigh the risks. If you stay focused on what could go wrong, the only thing that's gonna go wrong is you probably won't ever dare to take the risk and start that business of your dreams. Instead of focusing on what could go wrong, focus on what can go right. Learn how to conduct proper due diligence and how to select the right business by working with an experienced franchise consultant like The Daily Coach. I would love to be your daily coach. If I can help you, please leave a comment below or reach directly out to The Daily Coach. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell.